Good morning, dear students. Today we are going to take the summary of chapter one, which is motion. Let us start with the first idea in our lesson, which is motion is relative. A body can be in motion or at rest. It depends on the observer seeing this body, or we say the reference. A body is said to be in motion if its position changes as time passes with respect to an observer. If the position of an object or a body changes with respect to the observer or with respect to the reference, thus we say that this body is in motion. And it's said to be at rest if it doesn't change its position with respect to a given reference. If the position does not change, so we say that the body is at rest with respect to this object or to this reference or to this object let us take this small example this example we have a video this video we have two persons person a person b sitting in a moving train we have person a is at rest with respect to person b how did we know that person a is at rest with respect to person b as we have said, we have to determine the body, the reference, and the distance between the two objects. Here the body is the person A. The reference is the uh, person B. The word reference or uh, the reference always is after the word with respect to or after the word as seen by or relative to since the reference is the observer. Here the distance between the person A and the person B since person A and person B are both sitting Okay, in the train, the distance between person A and person B doesn't change or does not vary. Thus, we say that person A is at rest with respect to person B since the distance between them does not vary. The tree is in motion relative to the person A. Okay, how did we know that the tree is in motion? First, we have to specify the body. The body here is the tree. The reference is the word after relative to, which is the person A. And the distance between the tree and person A varies since the train is moving. Thus, the distance between the tree and person A varies. So, we say that the tree is a motion relative to a person A. So, to know or to describe a motion of a body, first we have to specify the body, the reference, and the distance. If the distance vary, then we say that this body is in motion if the distance does not vary then we say that this body is at rest trajectory the trajectory of a moving object is the set of positions occupied by this object during its motion it's the set of positions or you can say the path followed by an object during its motion here we have a mass and we have two paths a green path and a red path as you see here the green path is the correct path in order to get out of the mass so here in order to get out of the mass we have to follow the green trajectory not the red trajectory okay so the trajectory is the path followed by an object a moving object here we have a plane and smoke getting out from the plane. So this smoke represents the path followed by the plane during its motion. Thus, the trajectory here is the straight line. And here we have paths in order to go out from point B to point C and from the house to the tree. And a path in order to go from B to A and from A to C. These paths are called trajectory. Trajectory so is the path followed by a moving object. And the last idea in our lesson which is types of motion. We have two types of motion which are translation motion and rotation motion. Translation motion we have two types rectilinear and curvilinear. We say that the motion is a rectilinear translational motion if the trajectory followed by the moving object is a straight line. So if the trajectory or the path of the moving object is a straight line, thus we say that this motion is rectilinear translational motion. We say that the motion is curvilinear translational motion if the trajectory of a moving object is a curve. Curve is any path different from straight line. Okay, and we have a special case as we have mentioned in the last video that uh, we have circular 
translational motion if the curve has the form of a circle okay so we say that this motion is circular translational motion it's a special case from curvilinear motion and the second kind which is rotational motion if the object is moving around an axis and the axis passes through the body itself so if the object is rotating around an axis and this axis is passes through the object uh, itself so we say that this motion is rotational motion okay let us take some examples on the types of motion in the first example we have two cars and a bus moving on a straight road so the trajectory here is the straight line road thus since the trajectory is a straight line, we say that these objects or the motion of this object is rectilinear translational motion. In the second picture, we have a marching of soldiers. Also, they are moving on straight lines. The trajectory is a straight line. Thus, it's also translational rectilinear translational motion. In this figure, we have a car moving on this road. As you see here, the road it has the form of a curve not straight line it's a curve thus we say that the motion of the car here is curvilinear translational motion in this example we have a satellite moving around the earth here uh, the motion of the satellite is also curvilinear translational motion but as you see here the curve uh, is uh, has the form of a circle so the satellite is moving around the earth in a circular way so the motion of the satellite is circular translational motion and the last example here we have the uh, movement of the earth around its axis it's rotational motion since the earth is rotating around an axis okay and this axis is passing through the earth uh, so if an uh, if the object is moving around an axis and the axis is inside the object thus we say that it's rotation so the movement of earth around itself is rotational motion